Hey everyone, this is Nahian. So let's say you're making a game where you need to create a moving or scrolling background. So consider a game like Flappy Birds, where the bar doesn't move at all, but it's, the, it's only the pipes that move. It's useful to keep the player in one position and move things relative to it. That's where a scrolling background is needed. So Godot lets you create a parallax background node just to do that. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a scrolling background like that in the popular game called Flappy Birds. To get started, we need to plan things up. The scrolling background is going to have two layers. One will be the ground and the other will be the distant trees, mountains and clouds. Since the scrolling background will be continuous, we need to use seamless images or textures. So they always stack up horizontally without any noticeable discontinuation. With the resources gathered, we can begin working on the parallax background. I'm going to create a new scene for it and add the parallax background node as the root. Now, like I've said, in our case, the parallax background is going to comprise two layers. Based on the documentation, we can see that the layers are going to be represented by parallax layer nodes. So one layer will be for the ground and another layer will be for the distant scenery. You know, the trees, mountains and the clouds. In each of the layers, we're going to be adding the images as sprites. So let's add the image for the ground. Now let's add the image for the distant scenery. For the ground, it's only 128 pixel wide image. So I'm going to be setting the region to span the entirety of the window's width, which is 1024 pixels in my case. To avoid stretching and instead repeat the image, I'm going to the image from the assets and right from the import tab, I'm going to set the repeat flag to enabled. Let's re-import the image so the changes are reflected. Finally, let's set their positions and scales so they fit perfectly on the viewport. With the sprite set, let's set the motion of the parallax background to make it scroll. I'm going to create a script for this to manually update the scroll offset. If I used the camera and moved it, the background would automatically scroll based on the camera's movement. However, this is not suited for our game as we don't want the camera to move. So we are going to instead manually update the scroll offset of the parallax background. If you run this, you'll see that the scrolling does indeed work. However, blank spots are created as the background scrolls. To fill the empty spots, each layer has to have mirroring. So we are going to the motion mirroring and since we are only scrolling it horizontally, we need to worry about the X components. The value is going to be simply the amount of pixels after which the image or the texture repeats. So for the ground, since it repeats every 128 pixels, its motion mirroring should be 128. As for the distant scenery, it's going to be 1000 pixels. You can check right from your dough if the mirroring creates any discontinuation. With the infinite scrolling set in place, there's another thing left. That is the relative speed of the layers. We want the distant scenery to move much slower than the ground. To do so, I'm going to scale down the motion of the distant scenery to half. This way, the distant scenery is going to move twice as slow as the ground to create the illusion of distance. You know, distant objects always move slower from one's perspective. Thank you for watching, and I'm going to see you guys in the next video.